Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. I have two Creality CR Tennis Pro V2 printers and they work great. But there are several reasons why I have never done any upgrades on both of them. First, they printed quite well out of the box. But second, this printer has a ribbon cable, so all the stepper motors, the hot end, fans, and thermistor cables are integrated into one single ribbon cable. The advantage is that the cable management is much cleaner, but this makes it much harder to upgrade as we cannot see which wire is which. I've always wanted to make this printer have a direct drive extruder and add another fan to improve the part cooling since I installed the My3D OMG D1 extruder on the Ender 3 and it worked extremely well. So I will get another OMG A2 extruder and install it on this CR Tennis Pro V2. I will install it on one of my CR Tennis Pro V2 printers and compare it with the other one that has a stock setup to see if the filament retraction and cooling have improved after this upgrade. Let's get started. Before I install the new extruder and hot end, I will use a new roll of PLA filament and do some test prints on the stock setup and use them to compare with the upgraded results. I will print this face which is mainly used to test stringing and overhanging, and as you can see, there are no supports at the bottom. This has some higher requirements for both fan cooling and filament retraction. The stock setup can print this face, but obviously the result is not very good. The cooling of the right side is better than the left side, as there is only one cooling fan on the right. The filament retraction of the stock Bowden setup is also not very clean. Let's try another one. This model is mainly for testing overhanging and cooling. All four sides will extend without support, so this model won't require a high accuracy in retraction, but like the other model, the right side is much better than the left. So, only having one cooling fan on one side is a disadvantage. Okay, let's keep the prints here and start the upgrade. The extruder kit came with a DM1 extruder, a hot end mount, and an E3D style hot end. As we are going to install it as a direct drive, we don't need this mount. It also came with a heat cartridge and a thermistor, but I will just use the stock one as they are pretty much the same. It also came with two tubes that allow you to connect an air pump for cooling, and I will also test that out in this video. But first, I will test with fans. My 3D provided some STL files for you to print the fan ducts, but I will just print them with ABS filament. So, we now have everything ready. I will first remove the fan cover from the CR Tennis Pro V2. We have the hot end and the BL touch inside. I will remove the hot end and the Bowden tube from the extruder, remove the screws for the heat cartridge and thermistor and reuse them. For the fan cables, I will just cut them. I will cut the part cooling fan cable followed by the heat sink fan. I will strip the wires of the part cooling fan cables, then use a splitter cable to make it able to connect two fans. To make sure the cables are secure, I will use heat shrink connectors and a heat gun to connect them. I will do the same to the heat sink cooling fan. Now, all three fans are connected with the original cables. Next, I will put in brass threaded inserts that came with the kit and use a soldering iron to insert them. Set the temperature to around 250 Celsius and it will melt down the plastic slowly. I only need to apply a little bit of force to push them down. After all the brass threads are inserted, the fan ducts should look like this. I will now remove the existing stepper motor from the printer. I actually have a super lightweight Espina stepper motor, but it is still on its way. I will just use the stock heavy stepper motor in this upgrade and replace it later. Remove the old gear and put on the new gear from the kit. Secure the set screw on the flat side of the shaft. Then, align the back of the extruder on the stepper motor and secure them with four short M3 screws. Align the dual gear of the extruder to the stepper motor gear and make sure they spin together. Then, put on the tensioner and the front cover. Secure them with three longer M3 screws. We can now insert the spring at the front to push them against the gears so it will grip tightly on the filament. Don't tighten them too much, just making them at the same level as the bottom of the extruder will be fine, and you can always adjust these two set screws to adjust the tension. As we will use it as a direct extruder, we will insert the short filament guide instead of a Bowden tube coupler into the feeding side. 
we will prepare the hot end so we can insert it into the other side. Insert the Bowden tube all the way to the hot end and touch the nozzle, and use a marker to mark a line. Remember to leave it a little bit longer, so don't cut exactly on the line. In my case, I will cut it right next to the line so it should be around 1mm longer. This can make sure that the Bowden tube is squeezed tightly and touching the nozzle without a gap. This is very important, as if there is a gap between the nozzle and the Bowden tube, it will cause the filament to jam and the nozzle to clog. Insert it back to the hot end, and you can see that it's about a millimeter longer than the top of the connector. Now, we can screw it back into the extruder. As the fan duct already has a BL touch mount, I will remove the stock mount from the X carriage plate. Since the screws were tightened from the back, I will loosen the X carriage plate, remove the mount, and tighten it back. Make sure the X carriage plate is secure and able to move smoothly like before. Now, we can put the hot end mount on. As you can see, the text on the plate is upside down, which means the orientation is correct. It's kind of weird, but it's how it works. If not, your fan ducts will become 2 to 3 millimeters lower and touch the print bed before the nozzle does. We can now install the fan ducts, tighten two screws for each of them, and do the same to the other side. We can now put the hot end on the mount and install the fans on the ducts. The BL touch should mount on the front of the left fan duct. Finally, we can put on the heatsink fan mount, and this will also secure the whole hot end. Okay, the hardware installation is done. Since the gears of the new extruder are a 3 to 1 ratio, we need to set the new E steps. But unlike the Ender 3 Classic LCD screen, the touchscreen of the CR Tennis Pro doesn't have the option to do that. In this case, we will connect the printer to the computer and use printer face to send a G-code command to do that. According to the manual, if we use the NEMA 17 stock stepper motor, the E-step value should be 385. I will use printer face to send the M92 command and set it to 385. Send M500 to save it. Now, we can print the same models and see the result. The cooling is working pretty well, and the filament retraction is also quite clean. Okay, here are the results. For the stock setup, we only have one cooling fan on the right, so the cooling of the left side is not as good as the right side. For the new setup, we have two cooling fans, and the cooling for both the left and right sides are both looking good. Let's take a closer look. I would say the improvement is obvious. The filament retraction is cleaner, and the stringing has also improved. Let's try the second model. The model doesn't require a crazy amount of retraction, so it mainly tests the overhanging and cooling. Here are the results. It has the same problem with the stock setup. The cooling on the right is fine, but the left side does not look as good as the right. For the new setup, it looks a little better than the stock one, as both left and right sides received an equal amount of cooling. Since this hot end also came with two tubes for air pump cooling, I will remove the fan and see if it can improve even more. I will connect an air pump to the tube of the hot end. The pump I bought was an 8 watt pump. I also have a 3 watt pump, but I think the airflow may not be enough for cooling. Okay, this setup looks cleaner, and as we don't need those fans and ducts, these two adapters will allow the air to blow directly on the nozzle. I will reprint the vase using the setup, and see how it looks. Okay, here are the results. I would say they're both better than the stock setup, but the print with the air pump setup looks very similar to the 30mm dual fan setup. Let's take a closer look. 
If I didn't mark it at the bottom of the print, I really can't tell them apart. My final test would be a dual 40mm 4020 larger fan. As you can see, it's much larger and thicker than the 30mm 3010 fans. I believe these fans are a bit overkill as part cooling fans, but let's try it and see what happens. They sound loud and look huge on the hot end. Let's print the vase again. Surprisingly, it strings more than all other setups. The excessive amount of cooling also makes the filament not stick to each other. As you can see, one of these legs is broken. I stop the print and all the legs can be easily removed. These fans are powerful, but they don't work well on this setup. I think I will just stick to the 30mm fans or the 8 watt air pump. In conclusion, I would say this OMG Direct Extruder upgrade on the CR Tennis Pro V2 is successful. This uniquely designed dual gear extruder improves filament retraction and stringing, and the dual fans improved cooling. But from this experiment, using two powerful fans could actually make things worse. I hope you found this video useful. If you're interested in the OMG extruder, I put the website link under this video. I also put the Thingiverse 3D model links, and you can try to print them on your printer and see what kind of results you can get. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.